Um, what, what would be the far western space be? The far western region where we're at all the smell blue dots. Is it for monitor or for scaling? Oh, this is for monitor. Yes, yeah. yeah. This, this is so for this is where there are no blue dots. No, there are no blue dots. But that, of course, is that that, 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 that's something uh, I don't know. No, I can't identify the actual quotations here in, in this presentation. That, that would be something to, to, to explore. But is it only about the monitor or scale also? No, no, Skechem is not in this, uh, in this thing. But, but you, you could ask, so the question, the question is, why is there no uh, Belgian synonymy here yeah. in that area? Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's significant as far as I, but again, you would have to do a qualitative analysis to see precisely what, what, the, uh, what the quotations are. But I don't think it would be significant. In, uh, as far as I remember, I don't think it's uh, but, but it is, it's precisely the kind, of, and in that sense it's a, it's, it's a good question, it's precisely the type of, uh, of question that you would need for further refinement of the method. Uh, would there be specific parameters that you can, uh, that you can identify that, that lie behind this area where you don't have, uh, don't have say, blue synonyms, so to speak. Um, and that's, in a, in a sense, that's, that's the type of thing that, that, that we will be trying to do in the project. How can we easily uh, get at the diagnostics that would help us to, uh, to, to identify the, the patterns that we find? Okay, um, let's see how far we are. Yeah? Okay, this is, so this is how it works, but I, I, I guess you know how it works. But I, uh, so the example now, uh, and now I'm coming back to the to, to, to migrants in a sense, migrants, not, not refugees in this case, but again um, a, a Dutch um, pair of synonyms, near synonyms, Olukto, which is like alien, and migrant, which is migrant. And uh, some people claim, and that's where the issue of evaluation and, and taboo words, if you wish, comes in. Some people claim that these days, alokton is such a negative term that you should avoid it. Uh, as, as a form of whatever you would want to call it, political correctness or whatever, don't call those people alokton because that stick. And, and some newspapers actually decided no longer to use the term. So what we try to do is to investigate whether indeed alokton is becoming a negative term. Now, unfortunately, the, the data for which we were able to do this only go as far as 2005. That's a, a, a restriction on the corpora we have. Um, <coughs> And what we try to do is to identify the underlying dimensions that shape the way in which people talk about alokton or migrant. So to avoid confusion, the study here is not about the choice between the two forms, and that would be direct onomasiology. The study involves the total context in which they are used and then the dimensions that structure those contexts. You'll, you'll see in a moment what, what it involves. So for instance, uh, in this case, we uh, th this is the type of thing that would go into a distributional analysis. You will know that. But suppose that we have terms like uh, jobs, racism, integration, crime, voting rights, and then of course sugar, sun, and dog. Okay. And of course the latter don't count, these would be something like uh, whatever frequencies or even uh, uh, vocational strengths or something. We have vocational strengths in this case. Now the thing is, you would normally do that uh, in, in a straightforward distributional approach, a straightforward just take the terms 
the words like job and racism and integration and then start doing your analysis on that. But of course, you can also do uh, vector analysis, a distributional analysis on those terms themselves and group them into dimensions. Because uh, if you have a term like job, that would probably be associated quite strongly with another term like labor, work, um, what have you, um, pay, salary, etc., etc. So you would have an underlying dimension of labor market related um, qualities. And the same thing for, for racism. So ethnicity or other terms. Okay? So that's what we did. We had uh, the, the, the basic lexical collocates, but then the lexical collocates were grouped together again by using distributional methods into underlying dimensions. Um, so I'm, I'm describing here how it works. So first we let's go through this. So we build a matrix with the collocation strengths establishing the two terms, that's standard, and then you identify the strongest collocations of the words and use a vector space methods to determine the similarity between those collocates to cluster them. And so we come up with 12 dimensions. So I'm um, just mentioning a few of them, labor market, illegality, voting rights, education. And then we can build a new matrix, including the dimensions and the target categories, taken separately for each year in the database, and separately for two source types, because we have quality newspapers and popular newspapers. Then, of course, we can calculate the strength of association between the targets and the dimensions. So what it means is, in terms of concepts, the conceptual framework that I introduced, it's looking at the indirect conceptual construal of these two, um, these two targets. What is the indirect construal of alloctone? Is alloctone specifically associated with illegality? Or is it associated with something like voting rights or labor rights? And if you have a negative shift, specifically for Alokton, that would mean that some of the underlying dimensions become more important than others. Okay, so again, in terms of the terminology, you can think of those dimensions as, or the, the strength of each of those dimensions as uh, a conceptual profile for This is 1999, that's 2005, 2005. What you can see is that in both cases, in 99, the two terms are very close in terms of their construal. The two concepts are construed in roughly the same way, but if you move through uh, the time, along the time axis, you see that there is a differentiation. And in a sense, you can say, that uh, in, in this case, it is precisely migrant that specializes for the illegality dimension. So there is a difference of construal in the sense that the association of the notion migrant with illegality becomes more important over this time span. And it happens in the same way in the quality newspapers and in popular newspapers. Another example, uh, which also gives you an, an indication of growing specialization. 
synchronization of the two terms is that um, in this case it's uh, the labor market that I mentioned. And here you see that it is the other button, it's the blue one, so autochtone, that specializes, if you wish, or that becomes more associated with uh, job related. Here is an, an example of how we can use the vector space approach with, with a few tweaks, in this case looking for the underlying dimensions, dimensions in the background, in the background to um, do something more with the amounts <coughs> of data that we have. Of course, you could always try to do this purely manually, but then you would have to do it on the basis of samples of the text, for instance, perhaps the result would be the same. But of course, uh, if, this, uh, if this works, it's a nice handle on how to deal with, uh, uh, with large amounts of data. Okay. I'll wait with that. I'll wait for the questions. Uh, I'm sorry, could you please show the previous slide? But uh, the common opinion was that all of them is yeah yeah yes, yeah 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 no, yeah no no precisely what what we find here is not in accordance with what people said in let's say 2015 and because the discussion I referred to that that happened well I know two three years ago uh, of course we cannot make a statement about what happened between 2005 and, and 2000. But, but what I see here is an interesting stuff that uh, in quality papers, uh, the distinction between allochton and micron is a little bit higher. And maybe there is uh, something, a sophisticated thing that in quality papers, editors will care about this common opinion that allochton mm -hmm. is something that you have to avoid. And specifically in context of uh, illegality, they avoid this impolite allochton and use migrants, and that's why you see it increasing. Yeah, but I, I think that um, in um, the the negative the negative overtones of allochton would would probably not yet be there in this initial stage. It's the, the, the sensitivity for those terms is also relatively relatively recent. At least the explicit sensitivity. That's something I would say of, of, of the last uh, five five years, perhaps. So it, 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 you're correct. Of course, it could be one of the mechanisms behind what you see, but um, intuitively, um, on the basis of my my, my knowledge of the history. So I have my doubts, but but it's precisely one of the one of the things that we would want to know what are the what are the mechanisms behind this. Uh, of course, you can't know everything, right? You can't extract everything only from uh, from the text. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the uh, <coughs> differences between the two approaches, about the vector-based approach and uh, the multi-dimensional scaling. Well, uh, as far as I've seen. Um, the semantical space behaves differently in these two approaches. And yeah. it's sort of a, like, I quite get how it works in the vector-based approach, like, because everything moves. But in the MDS, uh, it was the only, what interests us, uh, what is interesting for us, uh, is the only thing that moves. And how, do, how did we construct the, the rest? Because it's like seven stages of Chinese, so it's di se seven different languages, and we should get seven different semantical spaces for that when we count the distance between different contexts. Well, wait, that, that's, that's one of, uh, that is, that, that's one of the things that I try to refer to, um, or I, I, I 
into that. It, the, the metronomy analysis does not yet use vector space uh, modeling. Uh, and you could try to do it, of course. You could, you could try to, to apply this type of method to, to what you would get. Uh, can we get back to the, to the slides uh, with the MDS analysis? Yeah, I mean, like, for each dot, like, uh, let's take the left one. So seven black dots are seven sta different stages of Chinese, right? Yeah. But for each of these dots, we should get a different combination of the gray dots, right? Aren't we supposed to, to have that? Because, like, no, they can't actually, be stable. Uh, actually, no, I, th I think you're, you're, you're correct in pointing to one of the, the difficulties with this representation. This is a static representation of the entire history. Yes, and, and how did you get it? Is it like a something, I, I don't know, it, how did you get this representation? Does it correspond to one of the stages in this history, or it's an average, or what is it? Well, uh, think, think of uh, 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 each, each dot mm -hmm. is the frequency of the, what was it, 15 metronymical patterns mm -hmm. at one stage of the language, for one specific target concept. So you have target concepts like beautiful woman, mm -hmm. servant girl, female member of the imperial household, etc., mm -hmm. etc., etc. And for each of those um, target concepts, we measure for seven periods of time mm -hmm. what the it's called a metonymical profile is of yeah. the, uh, of the um, um, 15 or 11 uh, metonymical patterns. Okay. So that, that is the basis for the, uh, uh, for the semantic. That, that's the matrix in a sense. So the matrix is the, the frequency of the, of the different So we also get, right. so we get seven dots for each of the targets. E yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So what we could do with this, so, so you do have, and, and that is one of the disadvantages, I think, you do have a single semantic space for the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the 15 concepts. Yeah, but, well, but my point is that we don't really know where, we, where it's moving, because we don't know uh, what time each of the gray dots corresponds to. So we are not sure if it moves to the center of the cluster or away from the center of the cluster, because we don't know what a cluster is because we don't know which, what, what these gray dots mean, basically. No, but, uh, they can mean different times. And yeah, the gray dots can be in different times, but you, you can, for each of the concepts, you can do the same thing as what we did here. You can draw the lines and you can see how the lines go. Yeah. And then, of course, the assumption is that the lines constitute a movement in the semantic space. Yeah. But where the semantic space is determined by the mm -hmm. frequency of the, the metonymical patterns. It's, mm -hmm. it's basically determined by the frequency of the patterns. Okay. Mm -hmm. It still isn't rather clear. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could, maybe you could assign a blue color to each Han uh, theory, you could assign a red color to each Yuan uh, concept, and and then yeah. show the clusters you need, am I right? Yeah. yeah, but you would not you would not expect clustering according to time. That's that's not what you would expect. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not uh, what what the um, uh, what the basic data in a sense uh, suggests. But what, it suggests it, what, what, you, what, you what is it then according to? Just for me, it was like I did expect it. <laughs> so that they form clusters actually that they do form clusters according to time. Like that, well, at least not the clusters itself uh, uh, represent some time, but the clusters change with time. Yes, but, but, but the, 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 the change in time is only apparent because we draw the lines from uh, period one to period two to period three and yes. so on. That, that is not what, ah, okay. what, what's, so what's underlying the dimensions. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I hadn't drawn the lines, you would not know uh, how the movement goes. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. I really like that suggestion about uh, having different colors for the different periods. Yeah. That yeah. would be so nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, but it depends what you want to do with it. So in, in, in this case, the, the, the question was primarily uh, what, what patterns of change do we see? Do, do, do they all stay within the same environment, so the same region, if you wish? Or do they move drastically to, to another position, or more or less drastically? Or do you have uh, jumps back and forth between competing or possibly competing? <coughs> So that, that was the type of, uh, of pattern that, that or underlying pattern that we were looking for. But, but again, I, I think, let's see where the confusion comes from. So the, the, the timeline is not in the MDS. Okay. The timeline only becomes apparent if you draw it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you would have colors, of course, and, and, and we did some of that, you can have maybe, I don't think we use colors for, for the time. We did use different symbols for different concepts, so that, that's also one thing you could do. Different symbols for the different concepts, and then different colors for the times, and then you <laughs> see a bit more still. Uh, you, you would still have to extract the more simplified, more what the filtered uh, representations to, to, to get at the interpretations. Mm -hmm. Okay. already said so. Um, <coughs> all of us, your logical salience, the relative frequency with which all of us, your logical choices are made. Uh, but in a, you can study it formally or conceptually. It's conceptually, specifically, also directly or indirectly. And uh, I, I'm more and more convinced that this more indirect way is uh, very promising. Also, for instance, for the, the question that you raised earlier, I think abstract concepts, is, is there a change in the way that a thing like glory is conceptualized when you have a look at the uh, kind of distributional contexts in which it appears, which is different from looking directly at what referentially speaking glory is. Um, then if we want to know if we're interested in a concept like entrenchment or more generally semantic conceptual change then you have a number of, of methods here that or incipient methods that way, for dealing with those phenomena. I said earlier that um, I would want to say a bit more about formal That was, that was an, an optional thing that I introduced or that I put into the, the, the representation. So let's, let's decide on what we're going to do on uh, Thursday. Okay. Um, the options are as follows. I can go briefly through. Uh, so this is so far. Part two, this is about lectometry, and the question there will be, can we, the, the starting point at least will be, if we take a lexical perspective, can, what, how should we measure whether language use is becoming more informal? That's something that people sometimes say, okay? Language use is becoming more informal. Uh, the question I want to answer is um, how can you measure that? What do you mean by formal? Yeah, that, well, that's one of the questions. 
<laughs> but when, when people say informal, then they mean something like terms that would usually, that, that uh, maybe a generation ago would not be used in uh, polite conversation and now appearing in uh, more formal contexts. That type of information. There's more involved, but we, you see that. We, uh, so that's one of, that's one of the things that Another uh, study I have uh, included in the presentation is um, so there's a, there's a choice among four things. And we'll be happy if we can do two. <laughs> so one is uh, the formal definition of informalization. <laughs> that's that's one. The other thing is. Um, Accent recognition. If you have, I must say that that is a study in, in, in which I was not the principal investigator, but it's a, it's a nice study. Uh, it's about um, English, English spoken with different foreign accents, and how, who recognizes which accent? So think of it, and I, I must I must immediately say that uh, I, I don't I don't think I have the actual fragments with the accent, so I can give you the analysis, but I can't uh, I, I can't play the actual accents to you. But it's it's a study with um, an, a number of European pronunciations of English, and then the same groups. Uh, I try to identify the other accents. So what, what are the determinants of accent recognition? That's, so that's part of perceptual, the perceptual approach. The, the, you remember, okay, I'm going back here. The, I have the three dimensions somewhere. Okay, three dimensions. So uh, here categorize, how do people categorize all the things? I have another, that's number three. I have another, uh, uh, another perspective there, which is, which is not as data oriented as the other two, but it's about cultural models of linguistic variation. And cultural models is something that people talk about in cognitive linguistics as high-level conceptualizations, and um, the, the point there is that if you think about the way people talk and think about language variation, you can distinguish a romantic model, which is involved with identity to a large extent, and you can distinguish the rationalist model, which refers to comprehension and those are really, that would be my claim, really deep-seated different models that people use to talk about language variation. So, choose for that. <laughs> then, um, then it's going to be more, it's an analysis of discourse about uh, language variation. And the final thing on the menu is, uh, has to do with what is the effect of a usage-based approach on linguistic systems? Uh, where I would want to show, again on, on the basis of, of, of Dutch data, that uh, if I want to put it provocatively, there's no such thing as a linguistic system. Yes, of course, how do we define system? Right. Well, <laughs> that's going to be one of the things that, uh, that goes into it. So you have the four choices. Uh, it's clear to you what the choices are? Okay. Think about it for a few days and then on Thursday you can tell me what, uh, what, you, want to, what you want to do. Unless you decide now. No, well, it's already, it's already all in the presentation. So uh, for me, for me it, it, it's, it's all the same. Uh, so think about it and I... I will learn on Thursday uh, which task.
Ja, das ist halt schön. Das ist so. <lacht>